Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I have here an audio um, of a recording between uh, an interviewer and uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And uh, I will caution you on this. Whenever you have someone interviewing you or asking you a question or you debate someone, and if that person starts by saying, well, you know, this is this and that. Oh, well, you know, we all know, you know that, you know, it's true. When you hear that person saying that, or oh, you know, it's not true. Um, it's like, usually like this. You know, that person is pure evil. Therefore, everything he did was evil. And you say, no, uh, let me discuss about your statement. It's not that we know, you think. You don't know what I think about that guy being pure evil, for instance. So that therefore you stopped his next move. You know, he wants to drag you into accepting something by saying, you already know that you wouldn't challenge that way. And you say, well, keep your frame intact and say, wait, let's discuss that. Maybe I disagree. Maybe there's nuances in your little assessment here. So the same here with uh, Robert F. Kennedy, which I think he is very courageous, but I think it goes to a uh, point right now where he becomes um, reckless. And uh, if you're reckless, you're not courageous anymore. Uh, in this case, we know that uh, these guys uh, think that he is unelectable and they will do uh, a quick job on him. Um, you know, the mass media will uh, expose him as being this, uh, this and that. So what happened? Kennedy is going to say certain things that are not supposed to be said. And that is, well, maybe we play, we, United States government plays a role, a negative role in what's going on in Ukraine. And that obviously triggers people and say, how can you say that? Because you know, this guy is all evil. Therefore, well, maybe this statement right here needs to be debated and discussed because I have evidence, counter arguments, arguments. So let's go and see what's going on in this um, article coming from Huff, Huff, Huff Post. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr. says Russia acted in, and I'm quoting, good faith in Ukraine invasion. You can't say this. Uh, this is like calling, I don't know, Adolf. Uh, you can't do that. I mean, these guys are going to tar you and feather you and send you out for a um, target practice. And I'm quoting, I think we are the ones who have not been acting in good faith. End quote. The 2024 Democratic presidential candidate said, oh my God, are you a traitor? Are you what? So Robert Kennedy said Wednesday he believes Russia acted, and I'm quoting, in good faith amid the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine, adding that the US, in fact, bore heavy responsibility for the ongoing war. Well, the emperor has no clothes. Basically, this is what Robert F. Kennedy did here. The emperor has no clothes. And everybody's like, what? Say and so. Kennedy, who announced his bid for Democratic nomination in April, he's not going to get it, made the comments on Sirius XM's the briefing with Steve Scully. Scully asked about Russian President Vladimir Putin's continued effort to seize part of Ukraine despite international condemnation. Kennedy claimed the way forward involved baby steps toward negotiation before the host pointed out he so far rejected those calls unless Russia keeps the territory it's already claimed. So this is, uh, you know, you know that's not true. And Kennedy hits back. And this is what Kennedy said. No, no. Putin has repeatedly said yes. And I'm going to play the, the audio for you here. In fact, and I'm quoting Kennedy, in fact, he negotiated two times. He agreed to agreements. He agreed to the Minsk Accord. And then he agreed in 2022 to an agreement that would have left Ukraine completely intact. End quote. And the weasel was like, <gasps> and I'm quoting again. Um, um, Kennedy. It was us who forced Zelensky to sabotage that agreement. It was already signed, end quote. He continues, continues, and I'm quoting again. So, you know, <laughs> the Russians were acting in good faith. So, no, I think we're the ones who have not been acting in good faith, end quote. Holy moly, that reminds me of JFK. 
or Robert. <laughs> okay, let's uh, listen to this audio and I hope it's going to be loud enough for you. A big part of that is can we even trust... But as you know, a big part of that is can we as you trust know. Vladimir Putin, which is a big question that the State Department and officials here in Washington continue to grapple with. A quick political well, question. Happens, but the way you find that out is by baby steps. You say, okay, do you want to negotiate? And but, so, does, but so far and he, he says no. He makes, what? But so far he, he says said, no, unless I can keep the territory no, no, we've already no, claimed. Putin, Putin has repeatedly said yes, in fact. He negotiated two times. He agreed to agreements. He agreed to the Minsk Accords, and then he agreed in 2022 to an agreement that would have left uh, Ukraine completely intact. And it was us who forced Zelensky to sabotage that agreement. It was already signed. So, you know, the, and the Russians were acting in good faith. They were removing their troops from Kiev. Oh. And this was all done secretly without telling the American people. So no, I, I think we're the ones who have not been acting in good faith. Holy moly, this guy's gonna be... That's not good. Let me read you the last part here. So what do you think? Is he a nut job as these guys are... These guys being the mass media and the guys over there, you know, in, in, in control, try to portray him. I mean, even... I mean, is it factual what he said? Is that evidence he got evidence for that whatever he supported he said he supported it with facts now it's true that you can support with certain kind of facts and ignore other facts that will actually oppose those, fa those facts and uh, you know uh, dismiss them it's true because that's why you have to take it in a chronological way and you take each and every uh, action that would deem necessary and would have validity in the process of finding out what happened Obviously, you, know, you don't care if, uh, let's say, in a, uh, I don't know, in a election, uh, the guy was five nine, was five ten. That really it should be irrelevant. So you don't get stuck to that. Oh, I think he got elected because he was five nine instead of five ten, or something like that. You know, or he wore a green shirt or a, a blue shirt. Should not be. Uh, yeah, do you think that's changed uh, uh, the electorate's uh, opinion on that? That's why they voted for him or did not vote for him. I don't think so. That's why, yeah, that's a fact happened. He wore that short shirt. But is this relevant? No, it's not. So look at what Kennedy said and uh, uh, reason, think if this is relevant to the point that he makes. It was us who did this, blah, 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 blah. And certain things, we're going to find them later. Be certain of that. But if you listen only to uh, these guys here or you listen only to those guys over there, then obviously you're going to have only this uh, opinion or that opinion. That's why look as as many sources of information as possible, but also verify. Don't okay. Emil said this. Well, Emil, let's go and verify. Is it true? And you go and look at different uh, sources. Or hey, this guy's from CNN said that. Is it true? That should be the first question. Why? Because people lie. Let's start with that one. And uh, if you talk about the big mass media, you have a big uh, uh, offender here, okay? And uh, it happened a lot of times. It's a pattern. So the first question, hey, how do you know it? Is it true? It's the first one. Don't start debating it. Okay, how did you get this information? Let's see. And then after we agree that that's an accurate uh, description of whatever happened or the evidence is accurate, then we move on. We don't, just don't say, oh, you know that's the way. No, I don't. I have questions about that. Well, you can question everything. Well, I'm not just biting like a little fish in the water when someone casts the lure, starts dropping on it. Don't do that. Skepticism. Skepticism, the mother of what? Knowledge or whatever. So let's see what the, uh, he says here in the last paragraph, which is very important. There is not a charitable view towards me in the mainstream media. End quote. Correct. Kennedy said on a serious exam. And I'm quoting again, and you know, the only thing, again, they use this, you know, the only thing I would say is that I would urge people not to believe the things that they are reading about me in the mainstream media. But, you know, listen to my own words and not accept the characterizations as necessarily true. And I'm quoting again, there seems to be an almost frantic need to discredit me, to marginalize me, 
to vilify me. He added, I am subscribing 100% to that. You can see it. And again, he said, well, why don't you listen to what I say? Uh, people interpret things, uh, twist them here and there, add an, an you know thing. Oh, you, oh, you know that's what it is. No, I don't. I disagree with your premises. Oh my God, you're so awful. Well, why don't you agree with mine? And then if you say no, I say, well, you're so awful. Remember, everything that can thro be thrown at you, you can throw it back. Don't accept the premises of a conversation or debate set by someone else. You are an individual. You are a human being. God damn it. My life has value. Remember the movie? I think it was The, the Network. Uh, uh, say it loud uh, or something like this. Get out and say, uh, I'm tired or whatever. I'm sick and whatever. Watch that uh, part when this guy acts like crazy and he talks. Uh, this is uh, movies. The movies cannot really come and tell you, hey, this is where it is. Because that would be not, uh, you're not going to see that movie coming out. So some, uh, some guys are just making movies, giving you hints or giving uh, some true words of the society we live in said by a crazy guy. So it can't be blended as normal. That means uh, if you think this way, you must be like Gigi, crazy from the movie. So in this movie, uh, The Network, this guy, I don't know his name, I never watched the movie, I watched only excerpts because I watched one and I all oh, this and this and it's very, very uh, a good insight. So this guy shows up at a studio and he says, you know, that uh, uh, talks about uh, the society and he is crazy. He's getting crazy at that point. He is gone, you know, and he, the th things that he says are true. But coming from the mouth of a crazy guy makes the viewer think, oh, only a crazy guy would think that way. It's funny, man, but it's true. But they made it like that. But it's very serious. So, yeah, my life has value, god damn it, I'm a human being. Yeah, that's the way you should think at every step when someone looks down or talks down on you. No, you don't frame the conversation here. No, that's not a subject. No, that's n we don't start from that. You have the same right. Keep your frame. He's not your boss. He's not a god or she's not a goddess or whatever. It's just we are one on one. Let's use this, use this and use the balls. Or squeaky squeaky if uh, you think you have them thank you very much for being with me again today he is in big trouble uh, I'm very concerned for him but I also I think people see that there are people like him many like him and it's all oh, uh, you mean crazies call them however you want I don't care if uh, it's crazy or not I care what he says and if he says makes sense and logical and is uh, um, you have evidence to support the, the, the claims what do you have to say Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.